to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Tonight is a miracle service, and the Lord will do us good in Jesus' name. Pastor Uche, thank you. Thank you. God bless you. I appreciate you. Can we lift our hands to heaven and ask the Lord for an encounter tonight? Just wave your hands, lift it to Jesus. Ask him for a visitation. Ask him for an encounter. That as his word comes, as his power flows, let it come your direction. Let it change your life. Let it give you a new beginning. Someone praying, following online, make sure you're praying. Father, tonight, give me a visitation here at House on the Rock, the refuge. Go ahead and pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Do not be distracted. Please pray. Go ahead and pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I believe by the authority of Scripture and the witness of the Spirit that this is one night that we may not forget in a hurry in the name of Jesus Christ because the Bible says whatsoever name Adam called it that was the name thereof we have called it a conference that would bring encounters and encounters we will experience in Jesus name it is important for us to understand why we are here and understanding will be seated shortly but just just listen as you stand understanding is very important in this kingdom your testimony your joy is based on understanding please give us nehemiah 8 i believe is verse 12. nehemiah 8 and verse 12 will be seated just to look at that scripture nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 12. Maybe I'll ask you to say, please say, just say, it, just say, it. thank you. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 12. Can we have it projected? Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 12. Please read with me. One to read. And the people went their way to eat and to drink and to send portions and to make great mirth why because they understood the words that were declared unto them their celebration was based on the confidence they had from understanding they went to eat they went to drink they sent portions they went to make merry because they understood the words that were declared unto them hallelujah Tonight, very briefly, I'm teaching on encounter with power. Encounter with power. I'll teach for a few minutes and then we'll pray. I, I really sense that there 
especially our people who have struggled with all kinds of bodily limitations sicknesses and infirmities the healer already prophesied that it is in this room and we decree and declare in the name of Jesus that not one person will leave this place disappointed in the name of Jesus Christ first Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 20 we have been called into a life of power we have been called into a life of power Christianity is a faith walk of power it is important that you understand the power dimension of the Christian faith first Corinthians 4 and verse 20 please first Corinthians 4 and verse 20 the Bible says for the kingdom of God is not in word but in power the manifestation of the kingdom has a power component to it you have to understand that the faith walk is a walk of power most believers know that there is such a phenomenon as the power of God but not many people have paid particular interest to understand the importance and the necessity of power in the life of a believer it took power for the word to become flesh and to be made manifest in the womb of a woman it took power for him to walk in a territory that did not pay attention to the counsel of God it took power for him to minister all through his manifestations on earth the miracles the signs and the wonders everything happened on account of the power of the Holy Ghost the Bible says at age 30 Jesus now having been baptized by John the Bible says the heavens were opened and the Holy Ghost came upon him in the similitude of a dove and then he departed to the wilderness after 40 days and 40 nights of prayer with fasting tempted of the devil the Bible says he returned in the power of the Holy Spirit not just full of the Spirit he returned in the power of the Holy Spirit all of the miracles that happen in the Bible especially in the life of Jesus were products of the manifestations of his power from the multiplication of bread and fish the raising of the dead the healing of the sick casting out demons and all kinds of miraculous manifestations like we considered yesterday come in the storm they said what manner of man is this that even the wind and the waves obey him hallelujah praise the lord one time the centurion's daughter died she was sick unto death and the centurion beckoned on jesus or jesus said let us go to your house and the centurion said no i understand a bit about power and authority for i am also a man under authority and on the strength of the authority i can tell one go and he will go i can tell another come and he will come so you too jesus i know that you are not just a benevolent savior you are under authority there is power that you can exert speak the word only and jesus said who taught you i have not found this faith no not in israel it took power for that dead body of jesus christ to come back to life on the third day the bible lets us know that there was a contention in psalm 24 when jesus was about to get back to the earth realm there was a cry lift up your heads O ye gates and be ye lifted ancient doors that the king of glory may come in and the gates spoke they said who is this king of glory because the law is that when you exit this realm someone from this realm has to call you back you can't return on your own so who is calling this one back now nobody on earth was calling him back yet he wanted to return and here was the reply he said he is the king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle what battle the defeat of satan and to collect the keys that adam gave man 
and triumphantly he rose again and when he rose again he said all hail all authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me go with that consciousness that this assignment is an assignment that will require power and I have supplied that power in Acts chapter 2 and verse 1 the Bible says when the day of Pentecost was fully come until that time he had spent time teaching them he sent them two by two seven by seven they went and they, they had all kinds of marvelous testimonies and they said even the demons fled at the word at their presence and Jesus said do not rejoice over this rejoice that your names are written in heaven he told them tarry ye in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power and on that glorious morning the Bible says they were together in one accord the faith life what you call Christianity was about to be birthed it did not just come by a sermon it was power that introduced the life that you call today the faith life the Bible says suddenly there was a sound of a mighty rushing wind it came and it filled that room and they saw what looked like cloven tongues and it sat on every one of them they were filled with the Holy Spirit they prayed in other tongues and that was the beginning of a life of exploits one time Peter was passing at the hour of prayer and he saw a man who had been lame there and the man beckoned on them expecting to receive something and he said silver and gold I do not have but there is what I have I know what I have in the name of Jesus rise up and walk and the Bible says the man just stood there watching and Peter held his hand and lifted him and he leaping stood it takes power to excel in life it takes power to ward off the forces of darkness that continue to contend against your life and my life and the purposes of God. The faith life is a life of power. First Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 4 to 5. First Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 4 to 5 paul is speaking now and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom but in the demonstration of the spirit and of power why verse 5 that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men but in the power of god the bible says in isaiah chapter 61 the messianic prophecy we we'll read the first seven verses it says the spirit of the lord is upon me for or because the lord had anointed me the word anoint means to legitimize my operation he had anointed me to preach it takes the anointing the power of god to preach good tidings to the meek it takes more than a good sermon to preach good tidings to the poor or the meek it takes the power of God he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives the opening of prison to them that are bound verse 2 it says to proclaim the year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give them beauty for ashes please say amen the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness it says that they might be called the trees of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified verse 4 says and they shall build the old wastes they shall raise up the former desolations they shall repair the waste cities the desolations of many generations verse 5 strangers shall stand and feed your flock and the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and vine dressers. Verse 6 says, But ye shall be named the priest of God. Men shall call you ministers of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. The last verse, For your shame.
my goodness this is a word for someone tonight that for your shame by the anointing this night you shall receive double and for confusion it says they shall rejoice in their portion therefore in their land they shall possess double everlasting joy shall be unto them please sit down physics defines energy as power that is expended within time that that it is possible please look up that it is possible to to expand power is defined as energy that is with respect to time there is an ability that is released in time we call it power it is truly the definition of power there is an ability of the spirit please look up everybody there is an ability of the spirit that can function in time to turn lives around to squeeze situations that are not consistent with the word of god until they exit your destiny and to introduce to your life the things that reflect what the word of god says should be in your life it takes the power of the holy ghost if i want to lift this this beautiful um pulpit here if i want to lift it i may attempt to lift it but there is a requisite level of energy a requisite level of power to be able to lift this the the power that is applied must be the greater than the power keeping this down is that true i can apply this effort this f this energy but if it is not strong enough to overcome what is keeping it down it will remain down there are we together now psalm 66 verse 3 says say unto god how terrible art thou in your ways it says through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves not through your power through the greatness of it through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you i made up my mind and I cried to God when he was calling and sending me to ministry. I said, Lord, do not just send me with a message. It will take more than a message to deliver the captives. It will take more than just a sermon to, to set age-long captivities and bring every negative thing to the obedience of Christ. In addition to the teachings, in addition to the messages, may I have the privilege of being a host of your power. Are we together? Encounter with power. The Bible talks about Jesus Christ who for 30 years, even though he was the word, but without the power of heaven resting upon that word, he seemed powerless for 30 years. He could not do any miracle. There was no record of any sign and any wonder for 30 years until the Holy Ghost came. And when the Holy Ghost came, with that Holy Ghost came power. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. But ye shall receive, ye shall receive. Anything the Bible says to receive can be rejected. Many have rejected power. Ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and that power will make you witnesses you may have heard me teach that a witness is a validator of a claim you do not need a witness until there is contention when you go to the law court you only need a witness if someone tries to negate the point you are presenting then the judge will ask you to bring your witness the assignment of the witness is to confirm the truthfulness of what you are saying and usually that witness will be asked to present a token of truthfulness called an evidence we were not there when jesus died physically we were not there when he walked upon the earth we were not there when he defeated satan we were not there when he ascended to heaven and yet he says we must be his witnesses 
what then becomes the evidence how do we tell the world that though we were not there we are not lying it takes the power of the holy spirit this is the evidence given to the believer please pay attention you cannot be an effective witness without power the gates will ask you pharaoh will ask you who sent you don't stand before pharaoh and advocate the exodus of god's people pharaoh will ask you who sent you are we together if it is true that jesus is alive if it is true that he died he defeated hell he defeated sin he defeated satan he defeated the grave and today he reigns in victory like we sing and so boldly propose there must be an evidence a token of truthfulness if it is true that he's alive over sickness if it is true that he's alive over over principalities and powers let me tell you this our christianity will only remain opinions if we do not back it up with the requisite level of power the the world that we live in today is a very proud world the bible says the greeks seek for a sign when you say god lives they will tell you i have heard i want to see when you say god blesses they will tell you i have heard but i want to see acts chapter 8 please let me show you how the gospel was supposed to be communicated acts chapter 8 we'll start from verse 5. the bible says and philip went down to the city of samaria please look up and preached christ unto them and the people with one accord gave heed to those things which philip spake please read the remaining part with me hearing It was never designed to stop at the realm of hearing alone hearing and seeing the miracles which he did hearing and seeing the miracles which he did next verse it says for unclean spirits this is what they saw crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsies that were lame were healed as a result and there was great joy in house on the rock the refuge <laughs> the manifestation of the kingdom of God in signs and wonders and miracles now you may have heard me say this that the reason why we seek and love and passionately pursue the things of God is not because of the things that we get we love him beyond things are we in agreement we love him beyond miracles beyond signs beyond wonders however in his benevolence in fact according to the teachings of jesus the proof of fatherhood is the ease to release he says if you being evil know how to give good gifts that means as evil as you are there is still a component of fatherhood did you know that many terrorists have families and as dangerous and evil as they are they still have compassion to take care of their children he said if you've been evil know how to give good gifts how much more will your heavenly father i believe in the power of god i believe in miracles i believe in signs i believe in wonders one genuine manifestation of the power of god can preach a thousand messages at once believe me when i tell you this the woman at the well when she had an encounter with jesus listen carefully she had an encounter with jesus and we began to prophetically open her up to her life and her destiny letting her see the state of her life the bible says she discerned that he was a prophet and then they began their discourse and ended with the subject of worship the bible says she left that business there of fetching water and she ran to the city everyone who encountered jesus and his power was too grateful to keep quiet the system of evangelism and advancing the gospel as it is today is too slow if we want to win souls per one per discussion per argument it would take us a thousand years before we reach the 7.6 billion people thereabout but one manifestation of the power of god that woman ran 
and said come see a man who had told me everything and they came and they encountered Jesus and their lives changed how about the madman in Gadara one single manifestation of the power of God brought ten cities to Jesus could it be that many of our family members have not been convinced to be so passionate about the things of the kingdom because we have proposed so many things about God without the requisite level of power to prove that reality the assignment of power is to prove to creation that God's word is not a lie power has an assignment to prove that the word of God is not a lie if the power of God is absent in the life of a believer no matter what it is that you propose sooner or later people will burn it in their minds that this is just theory we were not anointed to present a theoretical Jesus the reality of the faith life can be proven here and now Jesus came as a manifestation of the love of the father so that everything God said in scripture Jesus acted it out if the Bible said God is love, Jesus demonstrated that love as he healed the sick, as he opened doors for people. And that is the kind of ministry we have been given. Someone shout power. power. Let the devil hear you. Power. It takes power to heal the sick. It takes more than compassion. It takes power to declare over destinies and shift that atmosphere. I came here tonight with a strong burden in my heart hoping and trusting that we truly will encounter the power of God three things will happen tonight number one the first thing that I trust that would happen is that we are going to allow the power of God find expression to roll away burdens roll away shame and reproach and everything that has defied the name of the Lord number two more than being a witness to the power of God flowing through a man I am praying that tonight you will become that vessel that will host such levels of spiritual power that you will leave this place and for the remaining part of the conference building upon what happens tonight that by the end of this conference you will stand truly and know that you are ready to be a witness that when people come to you they will not only hear they will both hear and see listen the goodness and the love of God was not just to be believed you can taste and see that the Lord is good you can taste and see that the Lord is good I've had the honor and the privilege of talking with so many people by reason of the privilege of this call and sir I am amazed at the kinds of trouble the kinds of situations that you see people go through while they smile you cannot imagine the kind of situation medical reports that are death sentences financial situations demonic situations all kinds of troubles and most times believers just box this in hope that one day God will step in can I tell you my Bible says there remained a rest for the people of God even though they are the people of God there is a rest they have refused to enter it says today if you hear his voice do not harden your heart like they did that means they were given a chance to enter that rest but through unbelief they could not enter that rest it says to labor so that we'll enter that rest are we blessed yes encounter with the power of God you need the power of God in your life in the name of Jesus and you see when we talk about the power of God the power of God is literally God's ability to produce his dimension of results in a man 
the power of God is God's ability, not his kind of ability. The very ability of God working in a man to produce results that only God can produce. Can I tell you this? There are certain results in this earth realm that men unassisted cannot produce. If it is the Lord's doing, the Bible says, it is marvelous. There is a way you can do business that people know that this is just intellectual acumen. This is, this is just a human being stretching his creativity. There is a way you can do ministry. There is a way you can live your life. But when that engracing of the spirit comes upon you, like we discussed in the morning, your life becomes supernatural by every standard. How in the world do you look at a sick person someone who has been diagnosed for 10 years say and with one word in the name of jesus be healed and that person will check and the pain is gone no it takes more than intelligent communication behind those words there is the power of god the power of god the power of god ladies and gentlemen i introduce you tonight to the power of God to not only heal the power of God to not only save can I tell you this the power of God is akin to light I shared this while we were having service if a room is left dark for 20 years if a room is left dark for 10 years if a room is left dark for one week if a room is left dark for one hour how long does it take when you switch on the light for the room to be illuminated does it matter that the room has been dark for 20 years this is how the power of god works it doesn't matter how long the challenge has been there the light will not respect the longevity of the darkness at the instance the light comes the darkness goes so do not be surprised that in a moment you will find out that the debt that would have taken five years for you to pay that whilst you are in service God is already moving by his power please sit down let me tell you three three very important information about the power of God number one the power of God is creative. The power of God creates. To create means to make a reality that did not exist to appear. The power of God is creative. It can create. Even God who quickened the dead and called those things that be not as though they were. That means it is possible for me to have and to carry something now that does not exist around my life the power of god is creative number two the power of god is corrective it can correct any anomaly my goodness that when the power of god comes you see please look up the power of god functions like medicine like a drug if say for instance a gentleman is suffering from say malaria or headache or whatever it is does he put the drug on his head does he put the drug on his leg maybe not necessarily he will swallow that drug he does not have to tell the drug where to go to you just swallow it designed in the drug the drug knows where to go and correct that problem is that true now watch this when you swallow that drug you keep looking where you will know what the drug is doing by the correction that begins to happen that's how the word of god functions when it is introduced to your life your family your destiny you just leave the power of god it will go around your life checking for what part of your life is not like the garden of eden listen to me and it does not stop until it corrects so when the power of God comes to your life, it can literally turn your life to the direction that is right. The power of God does not just create, it can correct. 
Apostle, I have a medical report here that I have a situation that cannot be corrected medically. Let the power of God do that job. It can correct. Are we together? When you understand the creative dimension of the word of God, it will conquer fear and doubt. Because for most people, because we, we are accustomed to the scientific realm, the physical realm, the question like Mary is, how shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. It was a legitimate question. The angel's answer is my answer to you. The power of the highest shall overshadow you. So, I'm seated right here with a health condition. Apostle, are you saying in a moment that that medical report, that blood condition will leave? Question. Please look at me. The Bible says even the old earth and the old heaven will pass away. What is in your body that cannot pass away? If the earth itself can pass away. Hallelujah. I am, I am a recipient of the power of God, not just a custodian of it. I have been, I have been blessed. I know what the power of God can do in the life of an individual. Please hear me. Whenever you find out that there is a mountain that stands before you and you've exhausted everything you know to do, I want you to step back and allow the power of God. The power of God is able to create the power of god is able to correct apostle where will this breakthrough come from as i'm seated here now i wish i knew who would help me don't worry the word of god has that assignment it is able to bring that possibility into your life please i want you to believe everything that i'm saying because that is what will happen to you shortly yeah. hallelujah and you see, the thing about the power of God is that you do not have to debate the presence or the absence of it. The evidences will be clear whether it is there or not. As simple and as honest as that. It is impossible to be too hungry and not know. It is impossible to be too full and not know. It is impossible to be heavily pregnant and not know under normal circumstances. Anything you have in a lavish dimension, you must know. Many of you have been anointed, but it's like you are not anointed. God wants to step you to a level where even demons and devils will know that an engracing from heaven has come upon your life tonight. If you're in agreement with me, say amen. amen. Power to change situations. Power to provide supernatural solutions to the needs of men. The power of God is not just limited to healings and deliverances. You must understand this. The power of God also engraces you to provide all kinds of supernatural solutions. The third thing about the power of God that I want you to know is that the power of God brings ease to the life of a man. Believe me, the power of God brings ease to the life of a man. One time, I don't know what led me to that, that, that channel, that page on the, on the internet, on YouTube. I was watching and I was watching how these metals crush and recycle cars. So they just throw something and the metal will crush it. But then they threw one metal that was made of steel and the machine just stopped. It couldn't crush it couldn't crush it and i said wow i'm learning something here then they took it to a bigger machine and as soon as they dropped it there he squeezed that metal like orange i said that's it so the possibilities in our lives are not just based on the love of god the possibilities in our lives are based on the kind and the dimension of power that is at work in you are we together now let me tell you very quickly how the power of God works and then we begin to pray. The power of God works like money. I like to use money for an example because I have learned by experience that people really understand it when you use money. <laughs> Hallelujah. So if I have, say, a thousand naira, 
I have money. A thousand naira may be able to buy this. Why? Because this is still within the range of that price. But a thousand naira may not be able to buy a vehicle. Are we together now? So, if the challenge in front of me is to buy water, I am safe. Because a thousand naira can attend to that need. But if the challenge is now to buy a vehicle, I will need to have multiples of what I am holding. So he says, grace and peace be multiplied. Because, listen carefully, there are challenges that you may confront that the level of power you carry may not be able to solve. This is a very powerful teaching. Listen, do you know as a man of God, I can have someone say having headache, whatever pain a financial problem whatever demonic oppression and in the name of jesus i can pray for that person can i be honest with you the only problems in that man's life that will be solved through that prayer and that ministration would be the problems that are under the kind of grace i carry so it is possible that out of the 10 challenges he has only two will be solved he may fall down as usual and stand up but only two because that is on the spiritual currency. That is how far I could go in helping him. Now you will understand Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. It's not just that he was anointed. Look at the extent he was anointed. So that whatever problem you had, that grace was sufficient to solve it. This is also the reason why even though he has anointed us, we continue to contend for deeper and greater levels of power. Why? Because as the problems of men continue to multiply, as the arsenals of darkness come up with all kinds of problems, we must have the sufficient engracing to solve every problem that we confront. The degree to which you can solve the problems of men is the degree to which you are a blessing. And if it is true that the Bible says, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed, then we must continue to contend. Why do I have to pray and contend for greater levels of power when I am already seeing a measure? Because you see, there are some things that that level cannot do. The disciples came and asked Jesus and said, why couldn't we do this? And Jesus told them, he said, this kind goeth not by, but by prayer and fasting. The prayer and fasting does something to you that increases your capacity to respond to that situation. Are we together? Do you know, I look back at my life and I am surprised today at how certain things happened cheaply that were so difficult in time past. Even though I was anointed, even though I had the power of God, but I did not understand that the needs of men can only attend to the level of power. You've heard me say, every challenge is relative to the grace that confronts it. It is possible to stay around struggling over a situation and to make God look powerless in the face of that situation. And someone will come with a higher level of grace and not even pray any prayer. Just bring that presence and you find that problem just melt just like that. With all humility, I look at some of the situations that God has used me to solve in the life of people today. Did you know that these were the same situations that years ago I would struggle over and wonder what, what is wrong? Is it that I'm not anointed? Is it that I'm not using the name of Jesus? The difference was growth and increase. This is why he can measure a thousand cubits even though you are the river. Just because you are the river does not mean that you have everything. Then he measured a thousand cubits. I sense that there are some of us who are here tonight. It is time for that thousand cubits to be measured for you because you see, the level God is taking you to. Can I tell you how God honors you? God honors you by exposing you to people who have greater levels of problems so that with the greater anointing, when you are able to solve their problems, then your honor is greater. Is someone learning tonight? Our world today does not ignore the reality of power at work in a man. Now it is the desperation for power is so strong that whether it is diabolic power, it is whatever power, let it just be power that works. People will want to benefit from it first 
before they verify and ask for forgiveness if necessary but in the meantime they don't have that time for any discussion the moment they see anything that carries a semblance of power to provide results they will run so whilst we are giving all kinds of explanations in the church and saying don't go to herbalist don't go to all kinds of diabolic people if we do not rise and contend for superior levels of power in this end time we will be surprised how people will leave the church wall and immediately after our beautiful speaking they have heard but they want to see in some other place Are we together? One more time, shout power. power. It takes power to dislodge the arsenals of darkness that plague our children, that plague our lives, that plague our destinies, all kinds of demonic things. I marvel at the skills that Satan has employed so far in, in bringing troubles to people's lives. As I interact with people and as I talk with people, sometimes I, I get so emotional, I cannot imagine how determined Satan is to keep people in a way that never brings glory to God. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in your ways through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit this conference is called encounter encounter is more than a discussion it's an experience so when jesus is ready to use a man the way he prepares that man is to submit that man through seasons of dealings dealings that prune you dealings that break you listen carefully when god calls you he does not empower you anointing is not what follows calls when god calls you he does not call you to ministry he calls you to himself and it is a season of uncomfortable dealing and breaking but when you pass through that season with him and he's ready to send you he does not only send you with a message he sends you with the backing of heaven the backing of heaven and when you stand and deliver that message in truth that backing is ready to speak for you to bring healings and to validate number one that Jesus is Lord number two that you are truly sent the anointing I've taught you that is, is a system of legitimization. That means if you claim you came from God with a message from God, then the people will want to hear and to see. And the assignment of that anointing is to prove to men, among other reasons, that you are not an illegitimate communicator of the counsel of God. So when you speak and God backs you, it's his signature upon your life and within that environment, I sent him. Are we together? Because some of you will leave this meeting tonight in a hurry and you will get back home and stand and say, okay, when Saul left his father's house, he could not do much. But now Saul has returned as a prophet. Saul is not just returning as one who is looking for the father's donkey. So the encounter is twofold. Number one, to experience the grace that is so lavishly given. But number two, that you not only experience it, you become a conduit of that grace. And then in addition to all of the other parts of the conference down till Sunday, you will now know that I'm a career of higher grace. And in case you are saying, Apostle, I've, I think I'm anointed. The question is how many supernatural solutions has that level of anointing brought to men? And he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my feet and he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my knees and he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my loins and he measured a thousand cubits and it was a river overflowing and the Bible says everywhere the river went to the fish that was dead came back to life by reason of that overflowing anointing 
I also sense that tonight there are many of you who there will be a restoration of graces and dimensions. Dimensions in the spirit you once walked in. But for some reason, that visionary experience you used to have just seems to have faded away. That, that intuitiveness, that level of favor, when you came into this city, it was like you were a magnet. But now it looks like everything is gone. Find hope. The power of God can restore. The power of God can restore. The power of God can restore. My goodness, I already sense such a strong anointing here already. The power of God can restore. Another powerful thing about the power of God before we pray is that the power of God can bring acceleration. This is very, this is a, a, a very powerful feature of the power of God. Acceleration. When it has to do with acceleration, the hand of God can come upon a man and can fast track your life. Listen, if two of us start a journey here, we are supposed to run at the same pace. Whoever goes ahead is the one who arrives first. But when the power of God is introduced to the life of a man, he can pick you from that level pick you on a flight here's what the bible says they that wait upon the lord they shall renew so this is the business of strength he's talking about are we together now he says they will mount up with wings he's still talking about strength the moment he begins to talk about wings he's talking about speed he's talking about time they will mount up with wings as the eagles they will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. Elijah ran on barefoot by the power of God. And he overtook the chariots of Ahab even down to Israel. Someone tonight as you are encountering this power. Listen, it, it, it truly will walk like a dream. As you will see God just push you to levels that you cannot even explain. You just know you are moving by the spirit to dimensions that you cannot explain. Can I tell you this? Do not forbear with evil tonight. Do not forbear with anything that does not name the name of Christ. Do not give excuses. You are going to pray and you will insist that everything that is not consistent with the counsel of God as revealed from scripture, tonight is the night you will wave it a final goodbye. Can you rise up on your feet as we pray in one minute? It's going to be very, very fast so that we don't keep us uh, too long here. But then I want you to pray from the depth of your heart. Please lift your voice and pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Pray. Pray over your ministry. Pray over your life. Pray over your destiny. Pray over your health. It's a new season by the Spirit of the Living God. Following online here in the auditorium, lift your voice and pray. Man of God, you are praying. It's a new season. hallelujah hallelujah now let me say this by the grace of god i want to assure you by the spirit of the living god that god has granted us by the privilege of his grace the wisdom and the word compliancy to dispense the gifts of the spirit within the boundary of scripture you need not fear regardless the extremities of the manifestations 
by the grace of God we are dealing here with a system that honors God and is consistent with the ways of God so every prophetic word every manifestation of the spirit and every administration of the power of God that will happen here I want you to trust that it will happen within the boundary of Scripture find confidence and let your heart be open to receive I say this because I know that many of us may have had all kinds of experiences with the prophetic experiences with the miraculous and chances are that when the power of God is about to dispense be dispensed on this wise there can be that fear we can close our hearts in a bid to escape error in a bid to not get into anything that is extra biblical i want you to know that we love jesus we fear him and he's cultured us and trained us well we came out of the experience the dealing of the spirit it's not just an anointing that came we were taught and we were sent so find confidence that the administration of the power of god as you will be experiencing here will be within the boundary of scripture aimed at revealing jesus and bringing him glory are we together now you pray father let your power touch me let it rest upon my life let it change my life go ahead and pray go ahead and pray hallelujah praise the name of the lord dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua salman and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.